What is your um, official title over at Palmdale Learning Plaza? Science and language arts teacher, sixth grade teacher. Okay, and uh, science was a recent development, right? You just recently started teaching science? Yes, I recently started teaching science, in ah. large part because of my opportunities with NASA. I know you said that you guys had to uh, have some education a little bit mm -hmm. when, before they took you up there, just to um, see what you'd be dealing with and kind of get you familiar with what you'd be seeing. So, and you went up, what, what days did you actually fly? We actually flew on Monday and Wednesday. Okay. And the other days were training and information and tours of the different facilities at NASA Armstrong. Do you have any training at all before Monday, before your first flight? Yes, we had to take an online astronomy class through okay. Montana State University, um, and it was a graduate it was a graduate level class, but it was specially for us, for all the teachers that were chosen as ambassadors okay. for the Cycle 3 SOFIA program. And it was still it was still challenging, it was really challenging, but it was good and we were um, made to talk online with each other and we got to know each other through that class as well. We met two other um, teachers, two other ambassadors. Mm -hmm. And so it was me and my teammate, and then two other teachers. Okay. So we didn't really get to meet in person the other teachers, because there's 14 teams they chose for this year. Okay. For this uh, cycle. But they saved a lot of the information for flight week, as they call it. Okay. Uh, where we're, say, away from our school sites for an entire week. Mm -hmm. And most of the uh, ambassadors fly in, most of the teachers fly in from other places. Mm -hmm. We happen to be local. Right. So, but we all stay in, in the same hotel, we have breakfast together and dinner, and we do the touring together, ask questions. And then the uh, our escort also shows us uh, things that we can use in the classroom, mm -hmm. discusses any questions we have, so that we continue to learn about infrared astronomy and some of the science that goes behind it, not to mention the, uh, the research data. We looked at how to make a spectrometer in class, um, how to do some of the infrared uh, experiments, mm -hmm. and also uh, setting up some experiments we could do on the plane, investigations that we could video and record for our students, like using a Geiger counter. Okay. Um, and uh, a couple of teachers brought up uh, a sand timer and a uh, metronome to hmm. see if that was affected by being in a lower pressure atmosphere of the stratosphere. So your title on the trip was Ambassador, right? You said um, it was Triple A Ambassador? Triple A. They call us now uh -huh. Airborne Astronomy Ambassadors. Okay, so that's what the Triple A stands for. And we're part of the public outreach and education now. They're hoping you guys will take it back to the classroom, kind of, and um, teach the kids a little bit more about science. Take it back to the classroom and maybe even to the community. Okay. Um, so that we can have perhaps science fairs that are open up to our school and the larger community and we can um, teach in our classroom and also teach other teachers at our school sites about the SOFIA program. Just the science involved and SOFIA itself, infrared astronomy. And so what have you been doing in the classroom with the kids since you came back? Well, we've done some information about light and wavelength okay. because SOFIA is something that is a telescope that uses infrared wavelengths. Right. And so learning about that uh, learning about distances uh, as relates to space right. and that kind of relative distances. We've done a few, little bit of uh, information about our solar system, okay. but also about studying in deeper space um, star development primarily, because that's one of the things that Sophia studies quite a bit. Okay. Uh, that and um, also a little bit about galaxies. And I'm hoping to take it into uh, more information about finding life on other planets, comparing Earth science to uh, life on perhaps the moon of Saturn. Uh, so some of that cutting edge stuff and, and bring that into the classroom.
You said you already have an interest in astronomy before this even started, so did that kind of lend itself to learning about it? Do you find that was maybe a little bit easier to learn, or you were a little bit more interested in it than you might Yes, have? I think it was, because the targets that we were looking at were all astro astronomically based. Mm -hmm. We were working with astronomers, and there was a lot of other science involved. There was a lot of engineering, a lot of technology in terms of software mm -hmm. and computer programming, um, just a lot of different kinds of science, but the astronomy portion of it was really fascinating and looking deeply into space. So, tell me a little bit about going up on a plane. What was that like when you actually got to fly? We were really excited. Um, we knew that we're going higher than most planes go, and that we were working with some cutting-edge technology, yeah. really state-of-the-art. Two of the teachers that we flew with were Einstein Fellows. Uh, a lot of the teachers in this program are high school physics teachers. Mm -hmm. They, uh, Some of them run observatories. Okay. Um, a couple of them run aerospace programs where they teach students during elementary education how to fly airplanes. It was some amazing cohorts that we had that we worked were working with. So who was your partner on the trip again? Uh, Monique okay. Perez and she's a teacher at Palmdale Learning Plaza of seventh and eighth grade science. Okay. So she's a junior high teacher and she has an amazing hands-on program. She spends a lot of time dissecting things and, and doing a lot with the students that's uh, in the science lab at Plaza. You said you toured some facilities before you guys went up, or between flights. What between did you guys, flights. what did you get to take a look at? We looked at the instrument lab and talked to the head of that instrument lab. There are four different instruments that fly in Sophia. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to look at all of those and hear about that technology and also how they test the equipment. They've got a special um, piece of equipment that they've developed that uh, is a mock-up of the telescope and they will bring, if they have any troubleshooting or they have calibration issues or anything that they need with the instruments, mm -hmm. they'll line these instruments up with this special uh, device to test it so they don't have to take the telescope apart. That oh, was okay. fascinating. In the mirror coating facility, they recoat the mirror once a year. Okay. That was fascinating. They have to make a clean room out of it. Uh, there was a lot of science and technology we learned about. The plane is NASA owned. Mm -hmm. But the telescope was built in Germany, okay. as well as some of the, some of the equipment that we were flying with. So it's run and maintain the telescope, uh, and I can't remember the initials, DLR, Okay. since I don't speak German. Yeah. But that's the, the institution, though, in Germany? That's the institution in Germany, DLR okay. and the DSI, so uh, the German Space uh, Institutions. Okay. And, uh, and of course, the NASA uh, runs the airplane itself. So we get 80% uh, time on the airplane, mm -hmm. uh, uh, use of the telescope, and Germany has a dedicated 20% okay. uh, use of the telescope. Got up to, you said, 45,000? We got up to 45,000 feet, which is the operating limit of the airplane, I okay. guess. <laughs> and uh, actually got up a little bit above 45,000. And they said it was only the sixth time they'd done that. Most of the time, they fly at 43,000 as terms of their maximum. 45,000 is pretty exciting. All right, I think that's going to be it. Thank you for sitting down and talking with me and answering my questions.